Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warmer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around we are in for a bit of a treat, uh, playing on the Southern Chaos Wastes as the Vampire Counts against the forces of the Von Karsteins. So, I'm back from my vacation, uh, and I've been trying to sort of practice... Just diff There's a tournament coming up next week, a uh, small little tourney, but I haven't really done tourney plan. I figured I'd want to try it out. So I've been trying to practice with different factions, go with tourney legal builds, um, which do have certain restrictions placed on the unit count and model count, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and so that's kind of the different stuff. I'll, I'll, most likely, most of the comps you guys are going to see in the next upcoming week are going to be sort of tourney legal. So perhaps not exactly min-maxed the way you'll see normally when I play. Uh, but regardless, in the, going into this matchup, it was definitely a little bit of a cool op opportunity for me. Mirror matchups are something that's incredibly rare. It's Granted, this is Devon Karstein's, which is not exactly vampire counts, but um, you very rarely get mirror matchups. Um, this is actually the first time I've ever gotten a mirror matchup as the vampire counts against the... against uh, in, uh, against Karstein's or counts uh, themselves, so... or Musion or whatever. This is actually the first time ever that I re remember ha this happening in either Warhammer 1 or Warhammer 2. Um... So, wasn't entirely sure what this would entail, or what this built sort of situation would require as far as comps go, but decided to go with something I hoped would be competitive. Uh, knowing that Vampire Counts, of course, do not have the greatest tools for um, zoning out units like the Mortis Engine, I decided to actually center my build on the Mortis Engine, knowing that this fight was probably going to be pretty attritious, pretty grindy, because there weren't going to be any Fast Fear or Terror Breaks, um, there wasn't going to be any sudden, sudden crumbling due to ranged fire, there wasn't going to be anything of that sort, uh, I you know, decided to center on the Mortis Engine. So Klov Nagash, of course, providing healing, providing damage aura, um, and some of its own damage into the frontline fight. It is backed by some Graveguard with great weapons, some Sternsmen, uh, as well as some Skeleton Spears. So I figured that my opponent, as well as the, and the Kunigstein Stalkers, which are basically the poor man's Graveguard. They've got poison, they've got some more armor than normal Skeletons, some better stats, but well, they're basically poor man's Graveguard. So figuring that my opponent, if he went very Graveguard heavy, I could have some issues cracking that nut. Um, I figured, you know, some good Graveguard anchorage would be important. Uh, back it up with some Spears on the flanks, and then some Zombies in the front to soak up damage. And of course, Zombies are not going to win, even against other undead units. They're trash, but they can kind of soak up damage, absorb damage over time, and be a nuisance in general. Um, you can also get them much cheaper than, say, Skeleton Warriors. I did back them up with Manfred von Karstein here, mounted on a horse, nothing too fancy. He's pretty stripped down. Obviously, with the recent buffs to Vampire Count Lords, he's pretty decent. Uh, he does have Master Black Arcs, he does have his uh, Sword of Unholy Power, Spirit Leech, uh, Fos uh, no, Fosier, wow, I can't speak, Invocation of the Heck, Van Hell's Dance Macabre, as well as Raise Dead. So, the whole plethora of spells, um, basically just support spells by and large. I still think Raise Dead is good against Undead, just because you can sort of trap enemies, or block out cavalry, support your own cavalry, all that sort of stuff. It's still a very nifty spell, I think, even in this matchup. Finally, for a sort of mobile strike force and counter to large units, two units of Blood Knights as well as the Dire Pack. One of the important things to keep in mind is that most Vampire Count units, except the Cavalry, are very lightly armored. So the Dire Pack tends to do very well, even against Terror Geists. Um, they actually do exceptionally well against Terror Geists, whose bonus against large doesn't apply against them. Uh, they do great against Vargulfs, they'll do great against Script Horrors. Honestly, all those units crawl pretty easily to the Dire Pack. So they're a pretty potent unit, uh, so definitely watch out. My opponent went with a bit of a different build. They're definitely an interesting take on this battle. Rather than focusing on elite infantry, he decided to go with more chaffy, man spam, mix of graveguard. Well, there's only two units of graveguard in here. Mostly skeleton warriors, some skeleton spears, some zombies in the front to so once again a bit of a cheap cannon fodder. Uh, but interesting enough, a decent investment in heroes. Uh, he going as the car signs, he did bring Vlad, uh, who does have most of his spells, I think the only thing he's missing is the Gaze of Nagash. Uh, he does have Foe Seeker, Master of Beguilement, uh, or uh, Arcane Conduit, Master of Beguilement. Uh, he did bring Wind of Death, somewhat surprisingly. Aura of Dark Grandeur, which, uh, although it might not seem great against Undead, can definitely make a difference. Uh, he also did bring a Vampire of Death with a lot of spells, um, in, and a sort of anti-hero. She does have the uh, Purple Sun, she's got Soul Blight, she's got Spirit Leech, and she has the Doom and Darkness, which I don't think is a good choice against Undead, but you never know, sometimes you can get a quick crumble. Uh, so definitely don't underestimate it. The main strike force, my opponent went much heavier on the flanks. He's got two units of Black Knights and two units of Blood Knights. Now granted, these aren't the blood, Black Knights with Lance and Barding, so their charge bonus is trash. But, you know, they can trade pretty well with, say, Dire Pack. And having only brought two units of Blood Knights and the Dire Pack, my, I'm definitely in a worse position in the Cavalry Engagement. But this is where you can see as the fight is about to start breaking down here in the front line, as the lines are about to meet. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swing my Blood Knights away from this flank, figuring, you know, these guys aren't going to break on this flank. 
And my opponent's lords are much slower. It's Vlad, and it's um, the Vampire of Death is actually Mountain Horse, but it's just the Vampire of Death. Uh, Vlad, more importantly, is very slow. So I can shift all of my cavalry over here, and my opponent, who had, did not shift all of his cav, he, he's sure he can crush these guys, but honestly, he's not going to run over Graveguard all that quickly, and if he crushes some skeletons, that's okay. Um, and I figured I can, if I can catch these guys out, I'll be able to deliver pretty crushing blows. So you can see my opponent's Blood Knights here, not getting the full charge of my Blood Knights. Uh, huge fight sort of breaking down here. We do hit him with Manhell's Dance Macabre, which is going to give him a huge edge in this fight. And then you can see we are sort of collapsing from all sides. The dire Pack coming in from one flank, Blood Knights coming in from another. Uh, Manfred actually sitting around here doing nothing. We do hit these Blood Knights with Invocation of the Heck, trying to top them off. Uh, they actually haven't lost too many models, and you can see now we do swing around with the Blood Knights, plowing into these Black Knights and cutting them off. And of course, Black Knights are terrible terrible unit against Blood Knights. Uh, 80 armor, not good against, say, something like Dire Pack, but not very good at all against Blood Knights, who, of course, have m monstrous armor of their own at 110, and 40 melee defense to the 26 melee attack of Black Knights, who, even with charge bonus active, are not going to be hitting very often. Um, you can see the Black Blood Knights are just going to take these guys to town, while the, these Blood Knights mop up this pocket of Blood Knights over there. Meantime, the Dire Pack does tie down the Vampire of Death, and one of the important things to keep in mind about vampires is that while they have very solid armor, they do not have very solid melee defense. So 35 melee defense, she's actually getting taken to pound town by these angry, angry wolves. In the meantime, the frontline fight is a bit of an interesting mosh pit. My opponent got a great sort of charge here with the zombies, which has tied down the Sternsmen. He got Purple Sun that I missed, unfortunately, but uh, he tied down the Sternsmen, he tied down uh, the grave, grave Weapons, all those units, but, and then got a mini charge here with the Blood Knights. But unfortunately for him, I am sort of able to muck up these Blood Knights with some zombies, uh, these were I do believe, a summit group. And in the meantime, the Clothing Ash swing around, going into these Skeleton Spears, and it's going to start chipping away at these units. They start draining away from this uh, narrow area here. And in the meantime, Strunsmen are going to be able to push forward, while Manfred does countercharge and sort of try to zone out these Blood Knights. And now I put us a bit of a bit of a pickle here. His heroes are being tied down and bogged down over here, despite the summons from zombies. It's just not really enough. The Vampire of Death getting taken to Pound Town. Uh, she did get quite a lot of kills with the Purple Sun, but most of those against Cheap's Chaff. Over here, these Blood Knights, for the loss of two knights, managed to successfully eradicate that entire unit of Black Knights, um, and now they are swinging around to start delivering some nasty charges. Um, my opponent here does get his Blood Knights into the rear of my Skeleton Spears, but I don't really care. I'm going to get my Rays dead here with the Skeleton Warriors, and we're going to start swinging my own Blood Knights around. If I can take off these Blood Knights, the Black Knights aren't really that much of a threat. Even to say if I'm stuck with health unit Blood Knights, I should have a decent fighting chance, and you can see the Blood Knights are starting to take a bit of a beating. Uh, the Dire Pack, in the meantime, starts just bogging these guys down, buying me time, has a beautiful invocation, and heck starts hitting these guys up. In the pits, in the meantime, you can't see things going okay. The constant drain effect, of course, the Sterns mentioned an absolute beast in melee, tearing through skeleton warriors with ease, constantly being healed up by the Claw of the Gash, which stacks on top of the regen. And it's sort of running amok, and you can see it's just draining down these skeleton warriors. Of course, this Claw of the Gash does some melee damage of its own. Uh, it's not exactly meant to be a killer, but you can see it's all the way up to 53 kills, 55, and it's definitely tearing through these cheap chaff troops. And as these pockets start crumbling, things are definitely going to start turning for the worse for my opponent. You can't see these Blood Knights here starting to crumble down to under half strength, uh, far under half HP, about half model count. These Black Knights on the route, and of course the Black Knights can't really hold up. They'll do okay against Graveguard if there's a cycle charge, they'll do well against Skeletons and Zombies, but, and they're honestly not a bad cat in my opinion. If I'm, they're a decent cat, but in this sort of situation they're going to start struggling. You can see once the Blood Knights are gone, my opponent is going to be without a real anti-large counter. Here in the pits we're slowly but surely sweeping down the line with the Mortis Engine, as well as these Graveguard Great Weapons. We're just chopping up these Skeleton Warriors and these cheap Chaff Troops. Over here we do pins for these poor Skeleton war Spearmen between our own Skeleton Spears as well as uh, these fine men, these zombies, uh, who are slowly but surely just slugging it out in what is probably the most single most anticlimactic battle uh, of an era. And you can see this guy here without a head. He's still fighting. He's still fighting for the cause. Uh, but really probably the most pitiful fight you'll ever see. Uh, definitely not much fancy action there. First for my opponent though, Vampire of Death. Goner. We did knock her out with a bit of a spirit leech help from Manfred. Uh, another invocation neck going down, healing up this pocket. Blood Knight's finally about to go away, to, down to 240 uh, HP, crumbling quickly, down to just 6 miles, 5. Really not long for this world. And you can see these Blood Knight's still very healthy, up to 2 chevrons. The Dire Pack here actually cutting off the Black Knight's. And what's a really bad situation, the Black Knight's need to get sort of plow through and get out. Dire Pack cut them off, prevent them from escaping. If they try to escape, the Dire Pack will hound them to, to uh, death. Blood Knight's are in there. Goodbye, good night, black knights. In the meantime, in the pits, you can see, despite a zombie summon, my opponent's army is slowly but surely just getting drained away. A single pocket of graveyard here, not able to stem the tide. Uh, Strings still holding their own. 
uh, zombies, you can see, doing great. The graveyard is a little bit chilly, just getting beaten down by uh, just this mob of troops. And you can see the Cloud Nagash doing great work, set to 77 kills, slowly but surely just draining away these lead troops. And my opponent doesn't have the Winds of Magic. Now, Vlad's not a bad caster. He's decent. He's better than he used to be. He does have access to uh, Arcane Conduit now. But despite that, he's just not able to uh, win out in this, in this sort of... He's not able to constantly generate those heals that he really needs to be generating, especially as my opponent invested in death magic so much, and, and it really didn't offer him the, get him the returns he needed. You can see over here my cavalry base is just loitering on the periphery. Uh, one one of black knight, blood knights, not black knights, blood knights getting a nice little charge on the skeleton spears, causing a total disintegration. Uh, and at this point, it's simply GG as my opponent's army begins to crumble. Despite Van Hel's dance macabre going down that poor guy, it's just not going to cut the mustard. And... At this point, it's a clean up in aisle 9. My opponent's last few zombies actually score a kill there before they are going to be ignominiously taken off the field by this overwhelming force. And you can see this last zombie here uh, sort of fleeing and dying there in the pits. So, Pyrrhic victory for the Vampire Guns. And I honestly don't think it was that much of a Pyrrhic victory. I think it was pretty decisive. It's just that there were a few losses on some of the uh, blobby, cheap, dirt, cheap crap units. But. Quickly going stra over strategies. I do think that if you're going into a mirror matchup, and this is something you don't see very often, um, so. It's something that oh, it's it's tough to it's tough to decide. I think what to prioritize. I honestly myself going into this, I wasn't entirely sure what to bring. Um, but going into this sort of matchup, uh, if you're going up against vampire counts, if you're going up against uh, this sort of mere matchup, uh, you need to basically bring counters once you play it like any normal match. Um, bring counters to the most important or most scary units your opponent's likely to bring. Um, and if you've got a counter to and understand their weaknesses that you can exploit. The Klavnik Ash here, all over 100 kills, or near, sorry, nearly 100 kills, and probably huge amounts of damage done. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell just how much damage it did over time, because it's 9 chevrons, it, um, to begin with, it doesn't, uh, and you don't, so there's no other way of really registering how much damage it did. But it, that drain effect was constantly just deleting that cheap front line, making it much more difficult for the heavy calf to disentangle themselves when they charged in. Slowly but surely, just uh, whittling him down. It was also keeping the graveguard healed up. Uh, the uh, Sternsmen, the graveguard with great weapons, those units were getting tip to topped off by the that Klovnik Ash constantly. It was really providing a huge boost in that front line fight. Two units of Blood Knights, definitely immense work. 127 and 101 kills, two Chevrons gained at the Dire Pack as well, 52 kills. Most of those against high value targets, most of those against Black Knights, Blood Knights. Uh, the Vampire of Death, they were providing support there. So, massive support. These three units did massive work. I, there's just no way of underestimating that. Um, they're, they're, they're really solid target choice in this matchup, I think. Blood Knights, of course, are a great unit, uh, especially against you, when you need some something to counter large. And one of the things is, a Terrorgeist is pretty strong. The problem with the Terrorgeist is if you're not going to commit fully to an air build, which I didn't want to do in this situation, against Vampire Counts, there's a good chance your opponent can commit very heavily to, into an air build, um, and then you're screwed up in the air. Uh, if, you, if you've only brought one Terrorgeist or two Terrorgeist and your opponent went with, um, say, Red Duke and double... Well, in this case, there was no chance of Red Duke. But say my opponent had gone with uh, Isabella on a Hellseed and two Terrorgeists. Or a Strigo Ghoul King and on a Terrorgeist and two Terrorgeists. That would have been a very grim position. I would have not been in a good spot there. I would not have been able to contest despite the support from Manfred from the ground. I'm also personally not the biggest fan of the Terrorgeist just because it's not a very versatile unit. It is a very single-minded sort of weapon. You go after big targets with it. Even with charge bonus, it's pretty terrible against small targets. Um, it tends to get torn apart. Units like the Dire Pack shoot an absolute number on the Terrorgeist. Honestly, even Blood Knights, just with their raw damage output, will tear a Terrorgeist to shreds if they're able to get it surrounded. So that's one of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of the Terrorgeist uh, in general. I know a lot of people view it as an absolute anchor and a must-have. There are some matchups where I definitely think that's true. Um... But I do think that in this matchup especially, I wouldn't really consider that needed. Because your Blood Knights will do you much more work in crushing those Chaff Mobs. Much like when you're dealing with Tomb Kings, you need something to crush Chaff Mobs. And I think Blood Knights do a great job at killing those troops. Um, otherwise, you know, the Chaff did its work. The Graveguard did amazing work. <laughs> Skull and Spears slugging out with their cheap, um, alt cheap equivalents. That's great. Manfred, good support. For my opponent's build, my main critis critique or criticism here um, would be the overcommitment on magic. Flat's not a bad choice, honestly. He, he's decent. Um, yeah, I don't think he's great against vampire counts just because he's very survivability oriented, and vampire counts aren't great at sniping out lords to begin with, usually. Um, like, 
they do have some tools for Lord Sniping, but it's been gimped consecutively. Um, Red Duke is decent, backed by a bunch of terror guys. Uh, but you can usually kind of just run away from them <laughs> or avoid them. I'm not I'm not really convinced that Vlad is like necessarily the best choice in this matchup, but I don't think they've got really got the best choices for Lord Sniping. Uh, especially if you've got the bodyguard options to defend them with uh, because they can't snipe and shoot you down with anything but um, nonetheless Vlad is not a bad choice but I do think that the commitment into a Vampire of Death here was a big mistake it, my opponent would, this is this Vampire of Death was easily close to 2,000 gold at least 1,500 probably close to 2,000 gold uh, in that sort of situation you could have easily gotten an extra unit of Blood Knights on the field who would have done a far bigger difference um, they could have sh shifted that fight on the flank um, otherwise, honestly, I would have considered a cheaper Lord option. Maybe uh, something that could flex around and provide, uh, oh, even a Vampire Lord, maybe. Because one of the big problems with Vlad is just that he's so slow and so bad at flexing. Um, and in the Vampire Count and Vampire Count matchup, mobility is a huge issue, um, uh, I think. Because both sides are so, have no shooting, so, um, you need to be able to flex into position much more efficiently, I think. But, uh, there's less zoning out, it's more just crush an area, so if you can flex more troops to one area, it's mo uh, more, Im Im I think, more impactful in some ways than it is in some other matchups, where you're just trying to zone troops away, zone shooting out, stuff like that. But regardless, a good game to my opponent, I definitely do think if I, any, the only major criticism I had here, uh, because all, I do th personally think the Morris engine is probably really good in this matchup, uh, but the only major criticism I do have is this Vampire of Death. I think that, honestly, unit, extra unit of Blood Knights could have been a game changer in this game, um, or a Fargulf to try to push out the uh, Klovna Gash. A Terrorgeist to try to push out the Klovna Gash. Anything uh, to pressure this annoying single entity out would have been great. Otherwise, something to help deal with my Blood Knights would have been great. Regardless, good game to my opponent, FD89 here. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below if you have not already. If you have any comments and criticism, as usual, guys, be sure to post them. I will do my best to respond as soon as I can. Um, I should be back to a more consistent uh, uploading schedule. I'm back from vacation, so um, that that is all I really have to say, I guess. Um, and uh, as usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Why, right now.